that what is up everyone it is a fighter from get money coding if you are new to this channel i teach guys how to code in order for them to get money and if you do not know who i am as i said my name is fido i am a professional software engineer and i became so in 22 months without a computer science degree no boot camp experience and as well as no technical experience or technical certificates i worked in the restaurant industry prior to becoming a coder and was able to teach myself through the help and guidance of a really cool group and a really cool mentor and in combination with a lot of blood sweat and tears i was able to put it all together and get my first coding job in 2021 when uh when i when i crossed that threshold it was a crazy crazy time in my life i had dedicated everything that i had inside of me to be able to make that happen and to see it happen uh, i mean i i haven't looked back since the 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 difference in my life is is effectively night and day and a big part of what i do here is show you guys how i went about accomplishing said goal and teach you not just all the things that i did right but i think the most important part about what I teach you guys is all the things that I did wrong because it's the things that I did wrong that cost me a lot of time effort pain and a bit and I would say that a lot of that was unnecessary and cost me or I already mentioned when it cost me a lot of that was unnecessary and that's what I'm here is to that's what I'm here to do is to give you guys those insights and I pretty much give it for free and anything from learning how to code to breaking into the industry, I, I give it all to you guys for free. And I my, my, my paid services is for you guys to get more hands-on contact with me up front. All of the information is, is here for you for the taking. And in this case, if you want to learn to code uh, on your own, what we're teaching in this series, which if you've been following along, you're pretty familiar with it now, is programming fundamentals. And as I said before, these fundamentals are effectively universal across pretty much every pro pretty much every programming language and by you learning the fundamentals first it's going to make every other step that you go and pursue in your process to become a coder a lot easier so take advantage of this opportunity it's completely for free you can show up here and set up your uh, set up on free code camp which is where we're doing this it does you don't have to install anything it's not going to cost you anything uh, but but your time and attention and you can you can learn to code all on your own and 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 learn to code with an instructor which a lot of people wish they could, they could have uh so yeah so here for free uh we do these uh i'm i'm trying to do as many as i can throughout the week i'll i'll, I'll be breaking them up with more uh with just like uh, talking based live streams but uh we're uh we're, we're doing pretty good this weekend so i want to keep uh continue on the on the trend and if you are in the process of getting your first coding job I want to encourage you to go to getmoneycoding.com, which is in the label right here, and go get your free salary report by going to getmoneycoding.com, which I'll share here. By going to getmoneycoding.com, you all you have to do is enter your email here, and you get a free salary report that you're able to download on the other side of, uh, of the portal here once you submit your email. And the salary report is really important because it gives you a lot of the insight of where the market is right now. And considering uh, what the economy looks like, considering uh, innovations in technology like artificial intelligence, this is the salary report that you want to take a look at because it's very market adapted. It's very fresh data. Uh, I just updated it for it's the first update that I did in, uh, that I've done in 2023. So it, it gives you it's going to give you the most realistic eye in terms of what the market looks like, how much you get paid and then how to adapt to trends in the market so that you're prepared, not just uh, in, in, in the present, but in the future for what's coming. And and so that you can take advantage and crush your competition when it comes to going and getting your first coding job. And you get the free salary report at GetMoneyCoding.com. The link is in the description. And it's absolutely for free. It doesn't cost you a dime. All you have to do is enter your email here. And then once you enter your email here, you press you press the Get Access Now button. And this will take you to a another portal will, where you will get immediate access to be able to download your salary report. All you have to do is hit Download Now. And then it just takes a little bit sometimes to download. That one downloaded pretty quickly. And you'll be able to see the free PDF that you could get here. And I update, I update these uh, quarterly. So once you sign up, every time that I send out an update, 
once you're in that email list because you've signed up, I'll, I will send you the updated version. So you always have the freshest data on effectively a quarter to quarter basis in terms of what the job market looks like. So you know exactly what you're aiming at, even when you're starting out or if you're in the jobs or if you're in the job hunt, this is this can be advantageous to you as well. And um, yeah, just make sure to go and get it. It's it's a, it's a lot of it's, it's a lot of fun to put these together. And I know that it gives it guys a lot of value. So really happy that I'm able to offer that for absolutely free. All you have to do is go to getmoneycoding.com. Once again, enter your email, and then you have immediate access. Other than that, guys, we are going to get straight into it today. We're going to be learning some code, so get your get your learning caps on. And let me actually share once more here. And today we're going to be looking at the push and pop method in JavaScript. Now, if what we're going to get into today is unfamiliar with you, uh, is unfamiliar to you, Make sure that you watch the other videos in the series because everything is just a small it's it's a baby step to this point right so if you're if you've already studied on your own and you you don't need to brush up just getting a refresh on what the push and pop method does in general i think is going to be good however if you're like if you're like baby like baby bottom brand new make sure to start the series from the beginning and I'll walk you through every single one of these modules. And remember, by the time you get done with these modules, more or less, you will have effectively the fundamental programming, uh, the, the fundamental programming knowledge installed into your head that you'll that you'll utilize for the rest of your career. I utilize the stuff that I learned in Free Code Camp uh, to this day, to to this absolute day. It's it, it's so crazy. And this is this is where it all started. Actually, I think I have an image. I want to show you guys something. Uh, before we kick it off, I have an image of uh, what it looked like when I started to first code, and uh, I think some of you guys are gonna, some of you guys are gonna find this really, really interesting. So if I go to, let me go here. I think it's in my download section. Yeah. So let me pull it up here. So if you guys, uh, I'm gonna pull it up here. So this right here is actually where I started to code, guys. If you could believe it, this that little Chromebook's probably like underneath, like. Yeah, man, it can't be. It couldn't have been more than two hundred dollars a month. That was that was before all this crazy inflation. And I would, uh, I would, I would code in on, on this, uh, on on this uh, TV stand, the TV dinner stand. And this is my chair. I literally this shirt I have hanging in my bathroom. I, I have this shirt to this day. And you can see here my vision board. And I didn't have like, I didn't have like all the the most fancy uh, material or the most fancy tools to get to get going. Uh, but I knew that free code camp existed, so I, I would come in here, and, like literally go through these modules, just like you guys, and and do that, do it like learn on my own. Like I didn't have anybody guiding me, and it's just crazy to have this all. Uh, you, you you best believe that it, it is very surreal to have this all come full circle, and now me being able to teach you guys. And just so you know, I'm I earn I earn a six figure salary as a software engineer. And I'm a lead engineer, so I I lead other software engineers and. To think that I that I began here, that I began here is is just so uh, humbling, and I'm very very grateful that I'm able to pay it forward. And ideally, you can take this uh, information and run with it because that is what it is all about, boys. Okay, so now with that being uh, uh, done, we're gonna look at the push method, and I actually have some diagrams for you guys. Uh, so, especially for my guys watching on the replay, if you want to go a little bit in depth. Uh, we're going to be doing some diagrams today for my visual learners and let me know, uh, hit me up, uh, at getmoneycoding.com or excuse me, at getmoneycoding on Instagram or on telegram, Fido underscore CXI. And, and let me know what you think about these lessons. If you guys are more visual learners, we could do more visual diagram based learning. Um, I like integrating it there cause I think, or I like integrating diagram based learning because I think it really helps you guys, uh, for more of my visual learners. I know I'm a very visual learner. So it's helpful to get those diagrams. Okay, so we're going to get started. So the module that we're going to be looking at is manipulating arrays with the push method. Okay, it's all crazy zoomed in. Okay, so manipulating arrays with the push method. An easy way to append data to the end of an array is via the push function. Dot push takes one more one or more parameters and pushes them onto the end of the array. Examples. So here they give us an example of an array. And then they reference the dot push function. And through that, the reference of that dot push function, what they're saying is that they want to add this number four to the end of this array. So when the, 
uh, when if if you were to console log array one, it, what you would see is or R one would you would see is one two three and then this four at the end of it. Okay, and then if here for example when they R two, so they have an array, and then there is a string at the at the zero index there is a string at the first index and then there is a string at the second index if you add uh what they're trying to push here to the end of the array the last item here it will be in array in and of itself okay and just to give you guys an illustration of what this looks like physically it's actually a very uh Put the push and pop method right now we're looking at push it's actually a very physical process and i and once i started to understand that working with data structures is is somewhat of a and physical in the digital world that, that doesn't really make sense right um if from a diagram perspective it, you, you'll see why it starts to look more like a physical process and um i think mapping it to a physical process actually starts to make a lot more sense when you start working with data structures and really um it's really really interesting once you once you get really 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 deep in your your you're handling these like large, large payload, these very large uh, data structures and then like distributing them across a front end stuff gets stuff gets really, really cool. Right. Um, so here we're going to what I'm going to illustrate to you guys is how to add a uh, add a whatever. It could be a data, a data, a, a, a data type, a data structure to the end of an array. Right. So the way that the uh, the way that the push method works is that you effectively we're going to highlight these. So we have an array of four black circles, okay? And the indexes are 0, 1, 2, and 3. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add the red, a red circle through the push method uh, to the array, and it just it literally brings that, um, that data, in this case the red circle, into the back of the array, okay, or the end of the array. And then the, the index for that uh, piece of data ends up being, you, it, if you guessed it, it's going to be four, right? Because initially, well, because the position started at zero, one, two, three. And then if you add a position at the end of the array, it's just going to be an increment to the last, uh, the, the old last position, which is which was three. So if you add a new, a new piece of data, it's going to fill up a new position. In that case, that position is going to be four. Okay. So really that simple. Literally, it was out here and then you put it in there. Okay. And that's, that's how you uh, add data to the end of an array. And to illustrate this a little bit, so let's say that we have, and their their examples, I, I I like the multi-dimensional stuff. I I think they uh they kind of overkill a little bit. Um, so we're gonna we're, we're gonna simplify the example. So let's say that we have a array of uh animals, okay, and then we have so we have a dog, we have a cat, we have a panda, and we also have a uh, hamster. Okay. So let's say we have those animals and you went to, um, and you went to the animal store and you're, you, 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 you wanted to buy, you know, you weren't satisfied by the panda and you want a new animal. Okay. And this animal just happens to be a lizard. Okay. So what we're going to do to add that lizard to this list of animals or more specifically this array of animals, which is a data structure in JavaScript, we're going to reference the array by the name of the variable that it's set into. So at array animals, and then we are going to then utilize the dot operator. You guys don't necessarily need to know what the dot operator is right now, but just know that you need to utilize this dot in order to be able to use the push method or the push function. Okay. And then you're just literally going to write push like this. And then inside of these parentheses, you're going to add what you want to uh, you're going to inside of those parentheses, you're going to include what you want to add into the uh, the, the back of the array. OK, which is going to be uh, in this position here. OK, so what do we want to add? Did I, I, I think I said lizard, right? So we want to add a lizard. OK, so then you write it like that. Now we have effectively added the lizard to the end of the array. OK, so let's validate that. So let's console log the animals array after we implemented the push method animals. And you run it, and as you can see here, ignore ignore this line down here. As you can see here, the we're logging to the console the array of animals, right? And that's why you see dog, cat, panda, hamster, and then what else do you see? Lizard. Okay, so the lizard was added to the end of the array. Pretty simple. 
pretty straightforward in, in in my opinion you might have some questions around okay what is a dot operator and what is this what like why is it that we wrote something that's called push and has parentheses you, you don't really have to we haven't gone over functions yet so you don't really have to worry about that just know that these arrays when they're assigned to a variable like this or even through the through like literally the hard coded array you can utilize this dot operator and then reference this push method here. And then whatever you put inside of these parentheses is going to add that item to the end of the array. Okay. And then just to reiterate, all we did is that there was, um, is that we used the push method. So here was the lizard. In this case, it's a red circle. And we literally just added it to the end of the array. And then that now has an index of four. Okay. Cause it's the final, um, it's, it, it's the final spot out of the total amount of, uh, circles that were in in the array originally right so if there was you know the positions were zero one two three because you added to the end of three the next one is going to be uh the next logical position is going to be four right and we could validate that too in the code here where if you were to say um show me so let's look at the array of animals and show me the position of um in this case it's going to be zero one two three okay because because a hamster we're gonna because hamster's right there. We're gonna add, we're gonna say three, and then you see hamster there. Okay. Really, really cool. Now you can you can you can do this actually multiple times. So you could you could write another push here, and then you could write um, I don't know, uh, what's it, uh Doberman like this. Okay, and then say you got the Doberman. Okay, well, Doberman's gonna be at the now it's gonna be at, at the new end, which is lizard was the original end of the array. Uh, from the from the first push now we're going to add doberman to the end of that okay so that's going to be in position four okay you see that and then now you're going to see oh excuse me excuse me hold on why what did that happen so we were at let's, let's break this down so we were at lizard and lizard was at three. Oh, excuse me you see hamster oh excuse me lizard is at position four there you go. And that's the one we added because that's the final position. And then now let's say that we want to add uh, Doberman to it. So animal, animals or a Doberman to it like that. Okay. Since lizard was at position four, which was the final position in the array. And you just add We just added another item to the end of that array. Then the next item from a positioning standpoint is logically going to be at five. And that's why you see Doberman, right? So just to map that out one more time for you guys, which may, I, I, I almost think this might be overkill, but uh, just in case. So one, two, three, all right? So this is the original state of the array. So there was, it was, so dog was at zero, cat was at one, panda was at two, Hamster was at three. When we added the lizard to the end of the array, it got it got appended there, and then it became a uh, lizard uh, is at position four. And then so you could kind of think about like lizard figuratively being here, so filling up position four, right? And since lizard was there at four, when we added Doberman to the end of the existing array, which already had four as a position that was filled, uh, Doberman was going to fulfill the next logical position, which was five. And that's why you see Doberman, uh, Doberman here in the console when we're logging out the position of five uh, via that array. Okay. So really, really cool stuff. Also like pretty simple. Um, now I think what, what they try to do is that they try to throw you guys for a loop by doing these multidimensional arrays. And just as a quick review, uh, a multidimensional is, array is an array that has the list items within that array or other arrays. OK, so instead of just having a, a string of uh, panda or cat like we had in the last array, this one, uh, the items in this array are just a, a, another array. It's another data structure. Right. So let's see what they ask us to do here. So it says push dog uh, comma three, which is an array onto the end of the array variable. OK, so they pr they're pretty much just asking us to do what we just did, except instead of pushing a string. Uh, like we did with like Doberman and Lizard. In this case, we're gonna we're just gonna pass in another array. So we're gonna reference the existing array, my array here, and we're, we're gonna put dot. Okay, and then we're gonna uh, write push like this, and then we're gonna pass in this hard coded array here. So we're just gonna copy that over, and then we're gonna paste it here. Okay. Boom. Okay, and then now we're going to console log. So my. Uh, 
my array and you should see here okay so you, you see john here is the first uh position or the the zero position cat is at the first position here okay and if we add john excuse me <laughs> john if we add the if we add this uh hard-coded array right here on line five it's going to fulfill the last position which is here so if this was position zero this was position one the new the new item in the array at the end of it is going to be position two right so let's go ahead and reference that so we're going to do uh uh, we're going to use the bracket notation and say, hey, show us position two. And what do you know? It's the array that has the string of dog and the number of three, which is what we added to the end of the array. So it's working as expected. And stuff like this, I don't really expect you, you guys don't always push and pop for some reason. And the other one we're about to look at pop um, there. They just tend to be functions that I remember um, pretty intuitively. Um, and I don't really know why that is the case. There are certain functions that that don't come to me like that. Like, and it maybe it's just because of the frequency of how often I use them. Later on, when you guys become a little bit more advanced, you, you'll 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 take a look at higher order functions. And in, there's like certain higher order functions that are just very easy for me to remember and implement. And I think those two are for each is pretty much. It's kind of once you're a little bit more advanced, it's kind of a given that that's something that you're going to remember. And then map is something that I pretty much figure like understand uh, how it works right off the bat. Filter is one that I always have to reference before I implement it. Um, it's, another one is reduce too. And I think it's just, I don't use them as frequently, right? What I'm saying, um, but what I'm saying as it relates to you is that don't worry so much if you remember any of this. Just remember that it exists and be able to look it up whenever you have to, right? And how do you look things up? Well, you can utilize a more traditional way of looking stuff at, like, so show me the push method in JavaScript like this, right? You're going to get a bunch of links. W3Schools is a really great place to learn from. And, uh, you, and this is going to give you an illustration of how this works, right? And really similar, right? So they have a array of fruits. And what they do is that they add uh, the string of kiwi to the end of the array of fruits. So that when you go, in, if you were to run it, so let's, let's say we run it, um, you, you're you going to see it, it's outputting the what's inside of that array. You see here that the original array was just banana, orange, apple, mango, and then they added the kiwi string to the end of it, and then they outputted it out here. What now you see banana, orange, apple, mango, and then kiwi, right? So really cool. I mean, this is this is how I pretty much learned uh, on my own. Is whenever I had a question of what a certain method did or what a certain piece of code did, I always just looked it up on uh, on, on a search engine. And, and this method still works really really well. Um, there's a faster method, and that's utilizing Chat GPT to uh generate the response so you can so this is where it becomes so important to understand what you're searching for right so um how uh does a push method work in javascript uh attach a code snippet please right and then instead of you having to navigate those links it'll it'll just output it here for you And you'll see all the stuff here. Right. In this case, what what uh what uh GPT generated is that this was an empty array, and then they added the uh uh they added the string of apple to it. Um, and then when uh it rendered, it showed now see here's actually a drawback. You have to you have to copy and paste this to actually run this. That that is the one drawback. So you can't you can't do that what we did here. Where we were like console logging out the output because that that visualizes how the code is working um and and here too even even in w3 schools you can visualize how the code is working the benefit here is you didn't really have to search for it all you had to do was enter the uh the the query or the prompt and then it showed you the the code example you can learn from the code example in and of itself though so we started with the fruits array. It's funny that they grabbed this uh, fruits array. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if they scraped W three schools to get. The, I wonder if like the machine scraped the uh, W three schools to get the answer. But either way, so they 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 set up with the empty array. Then they added the string of apple to the end of the array, and then they actually added multiple uh, strings here, which is actually really cool. You, you you don't just have to. It, it's you you don't just have to do one at a time, and um. See, this is this is what's funny. And I think it understood its limitations, so it actually wrote the output in terms of uh, the array 
into a comment, which is nice. It's actually really nice. So we added Apple to the end of the array, and, and initially it was empty. So I, I, in one part of the state, it was just Apple by itself. Um, and then the and then we added banana and cherry to the end of that. And then it added those two strings to the end of the array. And it looks like it, it, it adds them in order from left to right. So what's actually cool about that is that we can we can test that here. So now let's say that instead of just uh, wanting to add the dog array to the end of uh, my array, um, let's say we want to instead uh, also add a string that says, uh, hello, my name. Oh, hello, my name is Fido. Okay, and then we then instead of just looking at the um, the array that's at the, the position of two, we actually just log the entire array. And now you see that we're logging the entire my array, and we did actually were we were actually able to add the dog array here, and as well we were able to add that string. Okay, so that's powerful because you, you can add you, you can add more than one item at a time, and uh, yeah, that's really cool. Actually, I I didn't even know you could do that. And then so if you can um. If you could do that, that means that, okay, so what position will this last item be? Well, it's the last item of the array. Originally, there was only zero and one positions that were filled. This is uh, dog three would uh, be two. And then, uh, hello, my name is Fido. This string would be three, I believe. Let me see if my math is right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so really, really cool stuff. That's how you add uh, uh, stuff to the end of an array. Um, and then I think I, uh, I kind of overdid it here because I had to I had already had the answer. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and run the test. All right. Cool. Now let's go to the next one. Okay. So now we're going to be looking at pop. Okay. Let's see. Oh man, the comments section is blown up. I didn't I haven't even checked the comments. Uh okay it's just a bot. It's just a bot. If there's a bot if you guys see the bot in the chat uh just uh just ignore it. Um okay so we are good there. Brand let me see. Let's come back here. Okay. So now we're going to be looking at the pop method. Okay. So the pop method is the is actually the other version of uh of the push method. So the push method, what it did is that it allowed us to add an item to the end of the an array. This method is going to allow us to take the item outside of the end of, or excuse me, it's going to allow us to take the item from the end of an array, okay? And then when you pop that method, when, when you pop that item from the end of the array, you have to catch it into a variable, okay? So a way to look at this is that, let's say that instead we our existing array is four black circles with the, with the uh, fifth circle being the red one. Let me make sure to, yeah, okay, I just wanted to make sure. So let's say we want to implement the pop method. What we're going to do is that we're going to all the pop method. Say we here's the array. We're going to implement the pop method. All we have to do is literally just boop, and that that's what the pop method does. Okay. Now the thing is, is that when you pop the the item that's at the end of the array. So let's say we want to pop the red circle, and it it can only pop the item that's at the end of the array. In this case, we're highlighting it via the red circle. When we pop this item, okay. So when we take it out of the end of the array, and we and we take it out, we have to catch it into something. And I actually don't know if you have to catch it into something, but I think it's it's good practice to catch it into something. Uh, and we could test that here in a sec. And then obviously, the, so the position goes away because that item doesn't exist anymore, right? Um, so once uh, once we pop that item, so let's say we, we took the item from the end of the array, typically what you're going to want to do is that you're going to want to uh, put it into a variable, right? So we could put, we could call this uh, var... Uh, bar red circle like this. Okay, so so we popped it, but then we caught it into a variable. Okay, so it was originally here. We took it out, and then we caught it inside of a variable. Now, anywhere this variable of red circle goes, it'll be able to reference the red circle. Okay, so that is a really, 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 really important part. Okay. And so let's let's take a look at what that looks like here in our code. Okay, so here, so let's say um, let's look at their example. So they have a an array that has three numbers inside of it, right? So it has one, four, and six. Okay, so let's say that we want to remove the end of that array, which is in this case this six. Okay, so 
how do we do that? Okay, how do we remove the end of that array? Okay, so we utilize the pot method. So very similar, they, see how they're referencing the variable and then utilizing that dot operator where before we were doing push. In this case, we're going to write it pop and you don't have to put anything inside of the parentheses. Okay, so they remove that six. Okay, so they remove that six. And remember what I said that when you remove the end of the uh, of that array, you have to catch it into something, right? And in this case, they're catching it, and we're catching it into the var red circle. In this case, in the variable by the name of red circle. In this case, we're going to catch it to these uh, this const set to one down. Okay, so this one down when you when you go to console log it. Okay, so we pop the six and then we set it to the variable of one down. Well, what does one down now stand for? It's, uh, or what does one down now represent? It represents that six, right? So now if you were to console log it, we would most likely get a six. I'm going to say pretty much yes, you, you would see that six. And then if you were to uh, console log the three array, it would no longer have the six because we removed it, right? So let's actually go ahead and take a look at what that, uh, let's go look at a code example here. Kind of like the last one. I'm going to clear what they have going on here because it's a little, uh, it's a little redundant. Give me one second. Okay, so let's say that you we have const. Um, let's say uh, cars. Okay, and then we have a Toyota. We have a what else? A uh, Mustang, we have a, um, Toyota Mustang Camaro and a Pinto. <laughs> okay. So let's say we have the, uh, so let's say we have those. Okay. So we want to remove the Pinto, uh, from this array. Okay. So the way that we do that is that we're going to write this, uh, so we're going to write cars uh dot pop like this okay and then effectively at this point we have already removed the end of that array okay and if you were to, and if you were to console log it we would have removed pinto right if you were to console log this cars dot pop you're gonna see pinto actually because that that's what got removed right so console log uh pinto excuse me cars dot pop okay and now you see pinto in the console right here okay boom like that OK, so that's how so that that's what happens. You don't have to catch it, but it just makes more sense if you do catch it. Right. So um, so the way to think about what we did without catching it is that effectively. So we go right here. OK. Like this is that we just popped it and it's just kind of floating around in our code. It's not anywhere. Right. Um, other than other than here, other than other other than this line right there. OK, so th that that value, that Pinto data type. Uh, that Pinto string data type is is caught in this cars dot pop uh, reference. Okay, now what we're going to want to do to so that that makes more logical sense, and I'm going to reiterate it just one more time. We're going to set it to a variable, okay, so that it's not just like free floating like that. So in this case, we're going to call uh, we're we're going to call a new variable, and we're going to say this let, and we're going to call it removed uh, car like this. Okay, and we're going to set it to cars dot pop. And then we're going to console log the value of removed. Uh, here, let me spell that correctly. Console log the value of removed car like this. Okay. Once you have that, you're going to see that it's Pinto. Okay. So it, the only reason I think why, in my opinion, why it's good to set it to a variable is so that you understand what actually got removed from that array. Otherwise, if you just say cars.pop, it's kind of simple to figure it out here when the array is very small. Sometimes you have very, very large arrays, very, very huge and large arrays. So it's not so easy to distinguish exactly what you removed. OK, so by doing this, you're able to more easily identify what is going on when you do this cars dot pop. We know we're removing an item, but this gives us a clue to exactly what we're removing. In this case, we're removing a car. OK, and that's what we see here when we log out the value of removed car, which is that variable. OK, now um. One more point that I wanted to add on to this is if you go and you look at the uh, the array in and of itself like this, you say and you see Toyota Mustang Camaro like this, um, you can see that the Pinto is not there anymore at the end of the variable. So we successfully removed it. Now this this is 
um, we're actually mutate. This is what's called we're uh, mutation. So we're actually uh, changing the array. Uh, and we're in some ways it's kind of, this is why I said, it's kind of like a physical process because the array does actually get changed when you do stuff like this, very similar to, uh, when we added a item to the end of the array, all of a sudden the array was different, right? Well, this is the same thing. Pinto was here in the physical array, but now that the state of that array, and so far as it relates to cars, that that variable has been changed. Okay, so anywhere where you go and you try to use uh, this array, you're no longer going to be able to see that uh, th that uh, that Pinto string, right? And the reason why is because it was removed via the pop method. Okay, so really, really cool stuff. Now, again, if you ever get stuck and you need to figure out, okay, let's say you're in a coding problem away from free coding camp. Uh, uh, from free code uh, bootcamp, what you could do is you can just, okay, show me how the pop method works in JavaScript like this, like this. Okay. And then you can very similar. It'll, it'll give you an example. You see, we have an array here, banana, orange, apple, mango. If they utilize the pop method through uh, this fruits variable, what, uh, what data type, or excuse me, what item is it going to remove from this array? We know that it's going to be the last item, right? So class, which one would it be? I'm highlighting it. It would be mango. Be mango, okay? All right, so now that uh, we uh, remove mango through that pop method, which the implementation is here, and then it's rendering out, um, the way that they set up their HTML, it's rendering out to the, uh, to I guess you could call this like a user interface, like a, like a mock user interface. All right, so the original array was banana, orange, apple, mango. They removed the mango, and then they rendered out the, uh, that array. And what, what's not there? It's banana, orange, apple, but there's no mango. Why? Because they removed it with pop. And here, they, they, they didn't actually catch it, which is, which is uh, really, really interesting. Okay, they didn't actually catch it. But mango is technically here. If, if, if you really wanted to take a look at it, it's right there, right? So very, very interesting. Th th these methods will come in handy at some point, and I can definitely guarantee it you will at least utilize them I mean, <laughs> you're definitely going to utilize them more than once. So these are going to be very, very important methods uh, throughout your uh, throughout your career, especially especially in JavaScript. I mean, and you'll see some variation of these in other programming languages. Um, but similar here, like so, uh, uh, if you're using ChatGPT, can you demonstrate to me how to use the pop method pop method in JavaScript? Certainly, right? And then and then it gets to work. And then it'll start rendering it to you. Here's an example code snippet that demonstrates how to use pop method. Pop, 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 pop. It's thinking a little bit. In this case, I have a number array. Okay. And then they, so they catch the, the, the item at the end of the array, which is five. They remove it and they set it to this variable of last number. Then they console log the existing array. And that's why you see the output here. It's one, two, three, four, right? And then they remove that five. And that five got caught into that last number of variables, I said. And then they logged out that last uh, number of variable. And you see it here, output as five. And then it gives you a little, this is what's cool about ChatGPT. It gives you a, le a little explanation as to how it works. And, and, and what's uh, really cool about this is that um, you can play with the code snippet. So you can ask it questions about the code snippet and it'll give you answers. Uh, um, yeah, it'll give you answers. So, so you could say once, um, once the, um, let me see. Once we remove the last number within the numbers, uh, numbers array, what is the given length of the array? You could ask it. Oh. When it works, <laughs> see here. Hopefully, it remembers that context. So, push method. Oh, let's see here. Paste it there. Okay, see. So you get asked it questions about the code. One less than its original length. In this, in this example, code snippet I provided earlier, the original length of the numbers array is five, right? So it gives you the actual length: one, two, three, four, five. Not not the positions, but the but the amount of characters or the amount of items that are in that array. And then it tells you. So it says the length of the numbers array will become four. Okay. You can verify this by calling the length property of the numbers array after removing the last element. So now you now we're seeing some of the combat. Now we're seeing some combination with stuff that we learned with uh, the length property. Actually, I don't know. 
if we learn the length property just yet. If we or if we haven't, we'll, we'll I think we will touch on it um, as we get closer to for loops. Um, but either way, that's that's what's so cool about this tool is that you, you can continue to interact with it. And this is how you start to this is really how you start to teach yourself on your own, right? Is that you're um, you're very uh, when you're self taught, you, you you jump around to different tools to give to embed the concepts inside your head. And it's always fun to look at things in different ways. And typically, that's going to be the best way to actually set the concept into your head is to really play with it and 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 see what works, right? And once you start really uh, starting to string some of these concepts together. Um, where you're going to be able to do well before I get into this last point, I just wanted to show you that once we remove that um, that uh, that pinto from the end of this array, okay, if you were to get the length of the array like this, like this, it, you're going to see that it says three, right? It says one, two, and three. Well, it's only three because that we remove that item from the end of the array. Let's say we were to comment this out, okay, all of a sudden pinto is there, right? Pinto is there again, and you save it, and you see now that it says four right? Because we're getting that length and we haven't removed Pinto yet, right? Through that pop method. Once we do remove Pinto from that pop method, you can see that the length goes back down to three. Okay. So really important stuff. And then once, so let's say we're accessing uh, the index of, so right now, zero, one, two, three, Pinto's at the index of three at the position of three. So you're going to see Pinto, uh, you're going to see, uh, well, it's saying undefined now. And you, why is it saying undefined? Because we removed it from the end of the array, right? So let's say that we were to actually comment this out and then add it back um, and add it back simply because we're not taking it out anymore. You're going to see Pinto be there again, right? But as soon as we remove Pinto, the position that was there it goes with it. Kind of like in our example here, where originally the position was when um, when the red circle was in there, this position here was four right? But once we utilize the pop method onto this array, we removed the red circle, we set it into the variable in that case. And then once that circle is gone, so is the position. So now in the array, you only have the positions of zero, one, two, and three. Okay. Really, really important to remember those little, those little details like that. When you start getting into for loops and you really start to uh, look through data structures, those little details are going to, uh, are, are, are going to come in handy. Okay, um, and then the last thing that I was going to say is that when you when you start doing little combinations like this, or when you start really uh, getting into these modules, you start knowing enough information to start kind of doing combinations. One of the things that I saw one of the students in uh, in the in the coaching uh, do. If you're interested in the coaching, go to getmoneycoding.com forward slash challenge. It's a little uh, that's this is a heads up for you guys. Um, or, or hit me up at uh, getmoneycoding.com on Instagram. Well, hit me up on getmoneycoding.com. Uh, uh, or excuse me, hit me up at getmoneycoding. Oh, hit me up at getmoneycoding on Instagram uh, if you're interested in, in the uh, in the coaching. Um, because uh, we're rolling out a we're rolling out a new offer. I can give you guys a, a little bit of a heads up. <laughs> um, if you're in the email list, you would know. Um, either way, so um, what I was gonna say, or you'll know sooner than the the other guys. Um. What was I going to say? Gosh, gosh, gosh. Oh, yeah. So now you start being able to combine stuff, okay? So let's say that we removed a uh, – so let's say we removed uh, – excuse me. So let's say we have cards like this. So console log cards like this, okay? So Toyota Mustang Camaro. Let's say we um, – console log cards like this and we only have toyota mustang camaro because we removed pinto okay well let's say that we actually want to uh combine some methods here and now we want to use the push method okay so we remove pinto but instead what we want to add is we want to add a uh, dodge okay so now what's really cool about this is that if you were to go and uh console log uh what's funny is it gave us the position but let's say now we we, we console log cars again what are we going to see? Okay. Now we're going to see Toyota Mustang Camaro Dodge. Okay. Now why this is so cool is because we removed, so let's say we don't like Pinto. We don't, we, we don't want that to be in the cards array. Okay. Well, we removed it and then we used the push method to add Dodge uh, to the end of that array. Okay. So, and, and that's after we removed the original Pinto. Then we logged out the array in and of itself. And now you see Toyota Mustang Camaro Dodge. So now you start to see what's so powerful because you can take things off and you can add things in. Okay. So really, really important part. 
I do skill tests with the guys and we go over uh, pop and push. And sometimes I think the guys um, forget that they ran through these modules. And um, I have seen these uh, particular methods be very useful in, in, in a professional sense. So I, so I hit them with it and it's funny watching them like trying to like figure out exactly what uh, those methods are doing. And and it, it typically it, it, they're really not that it's really not that uh, um, it's really not that hard to understand. Um, well, it it can be harder if you're just learning it on your own. I think once you get somebody explaining it through like through the actual logical concept, it becomes easier, right? Um, so let me think if there was anything else that I wanted to hit before we leave. Other than um, there was an interesting behavior that I noticed here that when you go uh, cars dot uh, push, oh yeah, so here. So when you do this cars.push, what's interesting is that it didn't, it, it doesn't uh, show you the entire array. It shows you um, that, that you're adding the item to. It shows you the item of, excuse me, it shows you the position of the item that you're adding. So this is 0, 1, uh, 2, and it's, uh, hold on. So 0, 1, 2. And then, I don't know, that's, see, isn't that weird? Because... So let, let, let's do car. So let's output the array. Yeah. So I don't know why it's uh, outputting four. That's what I don't understand because the original array is zero, one, two, three, right? But we removed the last item, which is Pinto, right? So that's no longer there. And then we're adding the item of Dodge, right? So I can't, I, I don't know other than what it, I don't know other than I think what it's doing, it's actually just outputting the length. So when you, when you just console log the cars dot push like this, it's just showing you the length of the array, which is kind of crazy. Or in this case, it's not showing you anything anymore. What is going on? It might just be the way that the, that they set up their, uh, their text editor. So console log cars broke the matrix guys. We broke the matrix dot this yeah it's, it's showing four so let me add another item uh, no, honda yeah yeah so it's, it's so uh, so it outputs the length which is super super interesting um so it outputs the length of the array when you write it out like this i don't know if that's true in all tech centers but it seems like it's doing it here my guess it's probably that probably is the case yeah so Either way, guys, that is actually it for today. If you are interested in getting your first coding job and you want to take a look at what the market looks like right now, whether we're in an economic high or an, an economic low, this salary report that we have at GetMoneyCoding.com, which is absolutely and totally free, will show you the best way to navigate the market as well as just how much money you can make so that you are prepared for taking on the, 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 the reality of what's out there and give yourself the a best shot of getting your coding job. To get that free salary report, all you have to do is go to getmoneycoding.com. Another thing that we added to the most recent salary report is that we're looking at technology trends and we're preparing you to uh, we're, we're giving you the strategy so that you, you don't just prepare yourself for right now, but you prepare yourself for what's changing in the future, right? Not just making money today, but making money in the future. That's, that's how we win. And in order to be able to get that free salary report, you, all you got to do is go to getmoneycoding.com and I'll show you guys right here. Just share my screen one more time. Uh, go here to getmoneycoding.com. You enter your email and then it could be whatever email you say this one right here, get access now. And then you're going to get uh, the ability to download your report immediately, get it there. And then you have your free PDF all to yourself. You can uh, you can do whatever you want with this. I mean, you can, you can print it, share it with some homies. Let your homies know that it exists. It's free for you to share. I have all my uh, citations linked here if you want to go look at those articles a little bit more in depth. And yeah, it's all yours. All you have to do is go to GetMoneyCoding.com, enter your email, and then it's all available for you. These get regularly updated, so you're not just going to get this salary report, but we go, we, we try to go about every quarter. As soon as the, we have fresh data available, we try to, um, we try to update these so you guys know where the market is in current standing and you have something to be able to reference. Uh, and I think doing it quarter by quarter is, is a really great way to do it. So once you sign up for the email list, you'll be getting updates on the new reports when, uh, when they release, I, I'd send it out to all the guys that were already currently on the email list. Actually, I think I send it out ahead of time. Um, or I, I, I send them a direct link to this report so that they can get access to it. So, uh, it's the gift that, uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So, yep. So I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I really, 
uh, I really appreciate you guys, and I will see you in the next one. I'll be back at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, okay? So thank you, and see you then. Peace. Oh, right here. Peace.